Robinson he even went down the sideline and he's got Cass Decker bringing you UCLA football content all throughout the year for LA Football Network. We got some new sponsors for the Bruin Bible. Number one, Bell to Bell Fitness with my main man, Tony Gonzalez, former UCLA boxing coach, 10 plus years of working with UCLA. He's got his own gym on the West Side, um, and he goes by this acronym FIT, Fight Inspired Training. He teaches you how to box. He gets you the best workout of your life. If you actually drop, uh, if you drop Bruin Bible, say that you learned about this through the Bruin Bible, you're going to get a free first session. So make sure to check that out. Bell to Bell Fitness. My man Tony Gonzalez is going to help you get right in the gym. And then we got Shay Tor. Shay Tor is the best realtor out in Arizona. He's a former UCLA alum. In fact, when we set up this call, he was going to the Pac-12 tournament for basketball. Uh, Shay Tor, you've probably seen him on Twitter. He's always at UCLA games. If you are looking to make that next property move to Arizona, like a lot of Californians are, Shea is your guy. He's a Bruin. He's got you covered, so make sure to check those guys out. Man, what is up? And welcome to the latest edition of the Bruin Bible. Very special guest in the house for the madman and myself, Mr. Wayne Cook, back in the house. Man, we saw him at spring practice today. Spring yeah. practice number two. We got two practices under our belt in the Deshaun Foster era for UCLA. Just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Wayne, how are you doing today, man? Great to see you as always. Gentlemen, it is it's awesome to be on with you guys again. Um, it was I don't know about you guys. I saw you guys up in the in, in, in lot eight up there smiling and and talking and laughing and it was it was a great atmosphere. It's it's fun to not feel like you're intruding, right? Like I know you guys feel that way. It's fun to not have the security people up there going, hey, 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 you can't stand here anymore. It was like, hi, good morning. How are you? You know, so it, it was it's it's a little bit of a breath of fresh air to see how welcoming uh, I had a lot of people to meet today. I want I mean, I met uh, a lot of the people and I'm not going to I'm not going to say names right now because I want to forget some of them. I know it because I just met them today. But like some of the new hires, like not coaches necessarily. But behind the scenes, uh, Darrell Price is an amazing guy, and he's kind of like the former player's contact. And I talked to him for forever today, and it just absolutely just he's 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 a he's a great addition. Met Coach White today, the quarterback coach. Actually, it was kind of fun. I got to stand with you know my guys, you know Garbers and Justin and Chase and Luke. And and coach and we all just had a conversation together. Like I was in the I was in the uh, quarterback room again, which was awesome. Uh, and we'll talk about that later. I love some of the things he was working on today that I would love to share with you guys. Uh, had a great conversation with Eric Bieni. Um, had to remind him that we had you know cross cross paths before. And he goes, "Oh my gosh, I knew I recognized you." I'm like, "Yeah, been doing the sideline thing forever." Um, so and I loved the years when he was here. And we had a great conversation and, and a lot of awesome stuff and Coach Foster and all that. It was just, it was, it was a great day, you guys. I don't think it was the best practice. Yeah. I think it was a little rough, but we're going to get into why, I think, a little bit. Because um, I think that's important. I, I think that that's something that needs to be, I mean, I think the answer to me is obvious, but it might not be to everybody else why there was some struggles out there. Yeah, and we'll dive into everything that goes on there. But it's nice to have the madman back on. He missed the first practice. He's got a lot of insights, too, from two days of practice as well. Nice. I think it's a natural place to kind of start at the quarterback position. Yeah. And uh, before I get to you, Wayne, madman, talk to me a little bit about what you've seen over the first two days of quarterbacks and what your opinions are on the quarterback room. One seems to be a little bit above everybody else, but there's a young kid kind of coming up for UCLA. For sure, Will. And, you know, Wayne, it's going to be great to kind of get your perspective here. I think over the first two days of, of practice, it's been pretty clear that this is Ethan Garbers' team. I don't think there's any surprise there. I think when you just look at his overall demeanor in the huddle, just his sort of command of the team, and also zip on the ball, I think it's very clear that this team is going to go as far as Ethan Garbers takes it. 
And I think there's a clear pecking order here of, of him being the guy. And, and it's just going to be a matter of him being able to put a whole season together. Uh, but number four is our signal caller. If there was any doubt after the LA Bowl, I think it's been pretty emphatic just in terms of how things have been progressing these first two days. He didn't have the best of practices today. Uh, it, a number of incompletions. He was a little bit ahead of some balls, behind on some balls. But I think that's more just a function of Russ day two being back out there, but very confident in Garbers being out there under this new Eric Bieniemy scheme. I think the drama will is who's going to be QB two because yeah. I think there's a perception right now that Justin Martin obviously is clearly QB two, and I think that's where the pecking order stands at the beginning of this race. But when I look and see just sort of eye test, when it just comes to size, when it comes to mechanics, when it comes to arm strength, when it comes to velocity of the ball, Luke Duncan on all of those factors is as good, if not better than Justin Martin. And so yeah. I think that last year, the, the drama and the narrative was who's going to be QB1? Is it going to be Garbers or more? I don't think we have that drama this year, but I think the drama resides in who's going to be QB2 because Luke Duncan right. looks every bit part of a guy that has tremendous upside moving forward. And I think Justin Martin is, is going to start realizing there, there's this young kid here who's 6'6 that's nipping on his heels. And I think that's going to be really fascinating to see, Wayne, how yeah. this thing plays out over the next couple of weeks and leading into that spring game. Because right now, just two, two practices <laughs> I test Luke Duncan passes the eye test for me over Justin Martin as the backup quarterback. Yeah. I yes. Guess. Go ahead, Will. I think it's great that what happened with that, with Luke Duncan coming up and looking fantastic, Justin Martin trying to put together. Wayne, you had a conversation with Ted White today. You were yeah. able to talk to Eric Bieniemy and talk to some of these young quarterbacks. What are you seeing from the quarterback competition as a whole for QB2? And what were some insights you got from the new coaching staff on the QBs themselves. So first of all, I obviously didn't see the first practice and I heard the, the office was much more crisp from everything that I watched and, and heard. Um, but, but here's, here's the, the, and I want to preface this whole conversation with they're learning an entirely new offense. We had speculated together before, would they keep some of the old stuff? Would they transition? Cause like having so many players back on offense that it, it was, I wasn't sure how they would go about this, and they ripped the bandaid off. Yeah. They are calling, and if, if, if you've ever watched any of those shows where it's like you know the it takes like thirty seconds to call a play in the NFL, they're they're doing that. Yeah. So so right now there is a ton, and I know you guys watch the press conferences afterwards with Eric Bieniemy, which was great, by the way. I mean, our press conferences so far have been so refreshing. They've been so honest. Like even, and I, and I hate to say this out loud, but even the dumb questions are answered intelligently, which to me has always been like the no brainer of like, if you're going to have this job, the media will ask you dumb questions and you need to answer it intelligently because you have a choice of what you say. And both Sean Foster, but, uh, Eric Bieniemy, even Logan Boy in his interview. I mean, they, 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 we've got some guys, you know, Logan's like 30 now, I think. So we have some guys that have been around for a while and, and they're, you, you always have a choice in how you answer questions. So that's great. And as an interviewer, by the way, for the media out there that's going to get mad at me, I ask dumb questions all the time. I actually know that it's a dumb question when it's coming out of my mouth. And I, I'm like, this is a dumb question. And when I do it, it's live. I can't like freaking edit it. So it's like, <laughs> it is what it is. So, so, the, so the, the, the cool thing about the quarterback is there's going to be growing pains. Anybody that's ever played sports knows, and we hear coaches say it all the time, right? I don't care if you're a defensive player or an offensive player. If you're thinking and just not reacting, you're going to be a step slow. So when you watch a quarterback like today, and it was funny because it, it, we'll get to this maybe a little bit later, but some of these throws, I don't know if you guys paid it, were, were catching this, but like I don't think there was a ton of separation today. It was a lot of third down stuff too, by the way, if you were, if you could hear, I don't know if you could hear the speakers where you're at, but it was a lot of third down work and throwing on third and six, third and seven, third and eight is hard because they know you're going to throw to a certain, you have to get a certain yardage. And so it, it was, it was a tough day. 
I, I like that Ethan didn't throw any interceptions. I know Justin Martin had kind of a bad one that he that he threw that was an interception that was like like as soon as it left his arms, I was stoned. Because if you guys saw me, I this is cool. I I, I feel so lucky because I kind of snuck over behind everything and just kind of stood where I can read it like a quarterback, and it was awesome. And and it was fun to watch that way. And so so I, I thought that you're learning a new offense. You're 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 not uh, one of the things I noticed about Garbage last year is how everything came out so quick. I thought he was better than Dante and better than the other quarterbacks because his decisions were just he was on it. Well, that's a guy that's been in a system for three or four years. You've got a brand new system right now, and he's still the experienced veteran, but it it, it was funny because they were laughing, like, listen, guys, like, we're not even doing the cadence right yet because the cadence is different this year. Like, again, you're doing, you, you were putting in, you know, a, a modified, I'm sure it's not exactly what they ran in, in Kansas City. And this is Eric Bieniemy and Deshaun Foster working together. But there's a lot of similarities to, to what they were. They threw a million over routes today or whatever they're called nowadays, those deep crossing routes. And they, they weren't great at that. But they all the quarterbacks stayed after with Coach White afterwards. And one of the coolest things ever, and I and I got to get in kind of real close on this one. They he was talking to them about you don't have to throw everything hard. And I, I've said this about Brett Hundley when he played. I said this about um, you know, even even Garbers last year, I think sometimes he could have taken something off. And I always think back to the great quarterbacks that play in the NFL, whether it's Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes. If you watch guys like that throw something as simple as a slant, it's not a 99 mile an hour fastball. Sometimes it is because it has to be. Sometimes, though, it's that one that you just get it out quick and you put it in the spot and you throw what's called a catchable football. And and it's it's hard for quarterbacks with big arms to learn this, but you have to. And so they all they worked on was throwing this deep crossing route. With well, it's like a two ball, right? It's not you're not ripping it, you're not floating it, but you're throwing a nice firm ball, but with a little bit of air under it. And what that does for everybody listening out there is when you whip one, yeah, I don't care if it's a deep ball or anything, your your window is real small. You can't miss by much, or it's a really difficult catch. When you throw a ball on time with a little bit less speed, everybody has a chance to adjust to it. Your receiver has a chance to slow down, speed up, like even on that crossing route. If he's a step ahead of a defender and you throw it and he slows down, it's going to be P.I., right? So, like, it, it was really – I loved watching that, and I love the, the – there, there's some some barking and some some other stuff, but there's, it always ends with positivity. There was a lot of – but I love you guys. I love how hard you're working. I know this is hard right now. So, anyway, going back to that whole quarterback conversation, they're going to struggle more through camp because if you watch the BNME interview, they introduced some stuff and they had time before practice to kind of get used to that for day one. But then between, you know, that practice and today's practice, they put in more stuff. So they didn't have as much time to process it. And like I said, they're still thinking about how to do the cadence right. You're playing major division one college football. I just moved up because I just got excited. And you're, and you're dealing with Jay freaking Toya sitting right yeah. on top of you. And you're and, and by the way, he's going to be a beast this year. He was a beast last year, but he's going to be even better. And and you're trying to get this stuff done, and you're still thinking about like, oh, the cadence is different. And I know that that some people go, cadences are easy. You're like, no, they're not. They're not easy. You practice cadence every single day, and that's why. How often do you see a backup quarterback come in? You're like, well, the cadence is a little different. That's why they're jumping off sides, and it's because it is. It, you, you've got to practice it over and over and over again to where it's just natural. Well, if you're thinking about that, you're thinking about all these new routes. You got five receivers out, and you're trying to figure out what to do, and then you got to think about what the defense is running. So you see what I'm getting at? You're trying to process all this stuff, and as of right now, today, they're they're not where they were at the end of last year when we watched that bowl game that looked so awesome because they're putting in new stuff. So the comment I made to somebody today was. This is the type of offense that, if it's learned correctly, may look worse today. But but what can it be, right? Yeah. And, and then that's an unanswered question. We don't know. I think if we, we'll talk about the receivers later. But oh, I know I said this last year, and it didn't quite live up to the hype, right? And, and, and maybe we missed Jake Bobo more than we thought last year. Um, 
but but like it, it there's some new players and some stuff and and logan lawyer's back I, I told him thanks for staying today when i talked to him um and it there's it it could be special we don't know yet, but it could be yeah i completely agree and to kind of piggyback off that i think this is a great segue to kind of talk about the running back room and the skill position players on offense Wayne, I had a really cool chance to look at the Eric Bieniemy interview after practice today. Yep. And someone asked him, you know, how do you feel about TJ Harden? You've kind of been getting hard on him a little bit out there in the football field. And he goes, I love that kid. He's tough. He's tough mm -hmm. as nails. And mm -hmm. Bieniemy is setting the tone with tough love and coaching. Like, I'm going to be mm -hmm. hard on you, but I'm trying to wring every ounce of potential out of you by doing this. So by setting that tone early, these kids know he's a disciplinarian, but he's also got their back in the long run. And he's yeah. got – a track record to prove that out. Talk to me about the running back room with TJ Harden and, you know, Keegan Jones. Yeah. And then talk to me about this talented wide receiver room. We yeah. were talking like last year was the most talented wide receiver room we've ever seen. Madman and I had our like, you know, mouths on the floor watching Rico Flores run routes mm -hmm. near us. I mean, are you talking about a completely built athlete out there in the football field? Yeah. Find that with Loya and Esturdivan. It's looking bright out here in Westwood despite – you know, the overcast day. Talk to me about these. Yeah. Field so, so, so let's start, guys, with uh, the B enemy uh, presser after practice. How can you not like him? I, I watched the whole video with because, you know, if I was smarter, I would have just walked over and watched it happen live. But I was too busy talking to people. But um, he he crushed it. And, and, and remember, I'm, I'm not surprised. One of my favorite coaching staffs uh, ever um, under Carl Durrell was when we had Tom Cable and we had uh, B enemy and we had um, Embry as our tight end coach. And we had, we had, we had, I mean, we, we blocked people. We had, and trust me, you guys, if you think that Eric B enemy with a star like Maurice Jones drew is who was in the conversation as the best running back we've ever had, right. He's in the conversation. We've had some really good ones yeah, going back. Right. I mean, you know, going back a long way, but he, he was great. And, and the enemy wrote him like you wouldn't believe. He wrote but Adrian I promise, Peterson. I, Wait. Exactly. I promise yeah. you guys, if, if, if you were in a scuffle in an alley and you had to survive to get out, you want MJD and then Eric the enemy in there with you. Like those guys are tough. They were, I remember one time Maurice Jones drew while playing in the, in the, in the John Hancock or the, or the El Paso or where we were in the Sun Bowl, which we have probably gone to more than we, we want to. Um, he was, he was hurt. And, and this is, this is again, what I hope that coaches inspire. And I know everybody, oh, in the modern world, you don't want to play hurt. You've got to protect your future. Maurice Jones drew did just, did just fine. He made plenty of money and he's still making plenty of money. But Maurice Jones Drew was was hurt and he needed to come out of the game. And he was about to fight every medical person on the field. He's like, no, I'm playing. Like in a, in a bowl game that people opt out of. Now, this guy's willing to risk it all to play another down and score another touchdown and help his teammates. I miss that. And I and I know it still exists. I had a long conversation with Joshua Kelly today, and I promise you, Joshua Kelly is the same guy. He's, he would he would fight, scratch, and claw for his teammates and give you everything he had. And and so it's it it so anyway, that that's that's a tie into the enemy, and then how engaging he was, how honest he was with the way he coaches. Um, and then to talk about and, and this is gonna lead to TJ. TJ, I like what he said about him because I noticed this too. TJ is pretty quiet. He's not, he's not a yeller and a screamer. And, and, and it's funny because those other guys that I talked to weren't the loudest people either. I, I've always been like, I was raised in the, in the mode of, of when you're good, people will tell you you're good. You don't have to tell them. Like, and I, I, I love that idea. Like, just go out and do it. Right. Yeah, go on, go on. Like, hey, I love TJ's mom. She's out there. She, she'll, she'll do it for you, TJ. She's, she, she's gonna, she's gonna, and I love, I love all the moms out there because I have one of them that will support every, my, my mom will find the Bruin Bible and she will listen to this because I tell her, I have to tell her, she gets mad at me when I don't. I say, you need to listen, mom, because I had a podcast last night. But TJ is, is a leader by example. I also love that. That's an underrated, everything you have to yell and scream and be a rah-rah guy to be a leader. I don't agree with that. 
Um, yeah, there's times to be vocal. I've been around quiet people that like every once in a while you like see it from them and you're like, oh my gosh. And I think TJ can be that guy. He looks great. You guys saw him. He just looks like a, a division one uh, quarterback. As far as Keegan, I, I love go back to the day before, before the, the first practice, the Tuesday or whatever, whenever they were out there before and listening to Deshaun Foster talk about how recruiting Keegan Jones was such a big deal. Keegan Jones, and, and as broadcasters, we saw this a lot. They're like, this dude is a he, – he's a big play waiting to happen. Funny. It's just if you break down every time he touches the ball, it's just, it, it just seems like there's, there's a chance. And he just does such good things. He's so electric. Yeah, he may not be in between the tackle every down back, but he can still do that. We've seen him do that. But you still have to find ways to get him the ball. I don't care if it's screens. I don't care if it's bubble screens. I don't care if it's – I don't care what it is. Run, run reverses to him. I mean, do whatever you've got to do to get him to – you know, run somebody. I mean, think about Kansas City. How many trick plays did they run where they fake and flip it out the other way? Keegan's perfect for that stuff. So, like, like because he's so fast that even if you think you have him, there's only so many guys – I remember watching this with, with Reggie Bush and like guys like McCaffrey and uh, Adrian Peterson back in the day when we saw him at Oklahoma way back when. There are only so many guys that play this game where you think you have an angle and you don't because they're faster than your brain can compute. Like you just like there's no way he can get the corner when I take this angle. And there's there's a few guys that exist. And Keegan, I've seen it. I watched him catch a sweet pass and everybody's going and he runs right by him because they're like, there's no way a person can run that fast. So he's got that kind of quicks. So I could feel it in Deshaun's voice that like, like he, he said it without saying it, right. He was underutilized. Oh, yeah. So and I'm going to throw one more at you before we, before we dive into the receivers, uh, Titus, uh, Mokia yeah. Al that I, I haven't said his name in yeah, over a year. Really uh, yeah. Titus looked good today. And and with him and Logan, because Logan's a stud. You guys, Logan is just a good, he's just he I watch him doing some one-hand stuff after practice today just for fun, and it just makes it look easy. He made one of the best catches at all college football last year, where there's no way he was inbounds, and yet he was inbounds. I mean, that was incredible. But but I love those guys as as slot. Um, the, the, the new guy blew me away with his athleticism, quasi Gilmer. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you guys, I, I, I got you. I introduced and again, you guys, I, I, I love this job that I have because I, I watch him in practice. I'm like quasi, I go, I just want to introduce myself. And it's Wayne Cook. I played quarterback here before you were born. And, and it's like, and, and I just, I could see and feel his athleticism. And someone in the know that I watched him for one day, but it, it doesn't take me very long to see like that guy, that guy can move. Once he learns to what, run the routes correctly and once he learns to like play the game at this level, because when you're that talented and you're in high school, I mean, we all, we all see in a division, a really good division one player in high school, they just make everybody else kind of look stupid and they don't even have to have good mechanics because they're just so fast and so athletic, they get away with it. But I could see from him a natural ability to catch the ball, like a natural ability. I always look for that in a receiver. Like the, the speed and athleticism is great. Timing is always one thing because a lot of quarterbacks don't have, I mean, excuse me, receivers don't have timing. Meaning that like when to slow down, when to speed up, when to put your hands up, when to, you know, run through a ball and then throw your hands up. Some, some receivers are amazing at that. And, and other people are just fast and they can't adjust to the ball at all. And they typically don't make it. He looked like one day, it's only one day, but he, for me, it looked like he has kind of that special ability. And then you guys also mentioned the, the transfer from Notre Dame. Uh, Rico Flores. Rico Flores. Yeah. Is there a junior in there or is it just – Junior. There's a yeah. junior in there. That's what I, that was going through my brain. He looked really good today too. And he, and he, and he looks the part. And then we still have Sturdivant getting used to number seven for him. Um I, I told you guys this a million times. Pagan jumped off. Yeah, just every time I watch him run, I'm like, dude, I love you. you. You just have to decide that you're. And I talked to him today too. And I feel like you know, some guys it just takes maturing into the role. You know, some guys are ready for it earlier than others. But like, I'm I'm sitting there watching all these guys. And I'm like, man, I go, you got to fight like crazy for playing time because I mean, I don't care if you if. if if, if you're a J Mike and you're looking at, I know Kyle Ford left and, and, and we can talk about that forever, but 
I think sometimes we get like excited because a kid comes from a certain school, but like, I think we have more speed and athleticism with the players we have. Mm-hmm. So I'm not trying to knock anybody, but like, like these guys can run. And so um, I, I don't think we're going to, we're going to fall off much. I didn't watch the tight ends as much. I feel good about them. I enjoyed watching Jared coach. I enjoyed watching. Um, did you guys hear Deshaun talk about like someone asked him the question. And again, this is going to go back to an intelligent answer. And I love this answer. And it happened so fast because a lot of people are like, well, what's the move about? Is it a promotion, a demotion? What are, people get all worked up about it. And Deshaun very quickly just said he wants to call plays. He needs to get inside and see what the linemen do. And it was like, without hesitation, this is a move for Jerry to help him with his career. That's cool. And it wasn't like he had to think of the answer. It wasn't BS. It was like, no, no, this is what happened. And I I just, I, I loved it. And again, it was not a great practice today. The effort, and, and again, I, the coaches knew this, was not as good. They talked a lot about, like, you guys, if you want change, you have to put in the work to change the direction we're going. And that's the truth. Like you can't, like as a person that played on a team that was lucky enough, or actually we weren't lucky, we did it, but but that was good enough to win a Pac-10 championship, we couldn't keep doing, because it had been seven years, we couldn't just keep doing the same thing. We had to figure out a way to win those games that we needed to win to make it to where we wanted to be. And it took change. You can't just keep doing like, right. The definition of insanity, you just keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. I think that was kind of the point from the coaches today. Like, Hey guys, this isn't going to cut it. This is another seven and eight win season. We need to play better or practice better. And well, I think the enemy said it, you, you have to, um, you have to practice good habits. You have to practice consistency. You have to practice. Like, you have to put it on the film. Like every time, like every time we watch the film, you can't be dogmatic. It's like the film doesn't lie. So you have to know that every single rep you take has to be, and that becomes a habit, right? So, so, so much. I told you guys I had a lot to say. I'm gonna take a deep breath. We talked about receivers, and again, it, it was it wasn't the greatest throwing day at all, but I still feel good about the talent. Uh, and and I, I'm gonna add one thing. I have one more thing to say. I actually thought during all the third down stuff, guys, and, and I know we're replacing a center and and, and Magna and 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 you were were kind of and they again Jay and Ke- Keanu are right on the other side, pretty established guys. Um they I thought the pass blocking was solid today. I I, I thought they did. I mean, and again, I they're watching this from my again when I went behind and I was watching the, the pocket especially for, for Ethan. And I think that's why Ethan finished strong. He actually ended the throwing with some really good throws in the last series or two. But when he was struggling, he had time. Like, I felt like he had time. Justin kind of got out of the pocket early a couple times, didn't read his blocks right. They had the, the guys pushed out, and he, he broke out anyway, took off running when he could have stayed in the pocket, in my opinion. Um, so I, I was I was pleased by that. The four guys that we, that came back, I thought I thought they did a pretty good job today. Yeah, there's a lot to go off of with that, man. You know, with the offensive line. Uh, I still am a little skeptical. I think I would like to see a little bit more cohesiveness with that. But same question to my guy, Madman. Running backs room, Keegan Jones coming back. Very ideal. TJ Harden, I think we could. I mean, is it crazy to say a ceiling season for TJ Harden to be 1,200, 1,300 yards, you know, in the Big Ten if everything goes right there? The wide receiver room, we had our thoughts on that, Madman. The floor is yours, buddy. What did you see from these skill position players today? Yeah, no, I, you know, so so many good things, Wayne, that that you brought up, and I'll, I, you know, I'll, I'll sort of piggyback off of you uh, to to sort of start. I mean, I think the tone of these first two days, I think we just sort of have to start there with the Eric the enemy intensity, and when you talk about kind of laying into TJ day one and telling him to kind of even walk run off the field with greater sense of urgency the urgency that he sort of called out some of the coaches on the sideline called out jerry called out the defensive staff told them they've got to coach up they've got to get their act together uh very very significant in terms of i think there's such an interesting juxtaposition where 
everyone's so excited about the welcoming nature of practice and <laughs> the, sorry, the, gre the gregariousness and the engagement. But then there's also a very new seriousness and a discipline and an energy and an attention to detail that maybe wasn't there those last few years. And I think, Wayne, it was very interesting to see these first two days. Obviously, Deshaun Foster is the head coach of this program. But if you ask me who's the head coach of spring practice, it's Eric Bieniemy. Uh, Deshaun yeah. Foster was kind of walking around and engaging with recruits, engaging with other folks on the sideline, making sure everybody was sort of locked in from kind of a cultural perspective. But if you talk about kind of the pecking order and who's at the root of the tree and who's running the show in terms of spring practice, it's unquestionably Eric Bieniemy. This is sort of his team right now. Obviously, you know, we're installing defensive packages. It's a different sort of mindset. But this is sort of EB's footprint uh, to start with, uh, and so that's very interesting to see, very exciting to see. And I think in, in the running back situation with TJ Harden, I, I think what's going to be interesting is I think stylistically we may see a little variation of TJ Harden this year in, in a very positive way to reach that ceiling that you mentioned. I think Harden is so good at his lateral cuts, both sort of pre line of scrimmage as well as when he hits a hole and kind of tries to get that secondary hole and sort of accelerate from there on out a lot of pitter patter it's a lot of kind of um you know lady on bell in his prime in a lot of ways and you can tell that eb really wants him to be kind of a one cut and go guy it's kind of like you know find your crease you know stick the cleat in the field and explode and i think that's where a lot of the discussion and the coaching was taking place so very excited to see the T.J. Harden evolution as RB1 mm -hmm. and Keegan Jones being that perfect complement. Wayne, you talked about it with the speed. I think the value that Keegan Jones is going to bring is so significant in that passing game. Out of the backfield, the wheel routes, the, the unique kind of shovel passes, the screen passes, mm -hmm. you can line him up all, uh, out wide and sort of stack formations. And then, of course, taking the blows from Harden in that RB2 slot. Mm -hmm. So I think the the solidification of both uh, running backs moving forward, I think is really significant. And then the, the receivers. I mean, Wayne, I think you said it best. This, we thought last year was the most loaded wide yeah. receiver boom UCLA has had in decades. This year's group probably beats last year's group. Just when yeah. you talk the incumbency effect and then who's new, I think that one, two, three feels very clear to me. And I think it's some combination of Loya, Sturdivant, and Rico Flores Jr. I, I can't say enough good things about Rico Flores. Just his physicality, the, the polish of his route running, just the specimen that he is, the confidence he has in terms of catching the ball. Will, he reminds me of a slightly bigger, thicker Calvin Ridley, uh, you know, when yeah. you talk about it. Um, and I think just where he's going to be positioned on the field, I think is going to be really, really significant. And then Gilmer, you know, Wayne, you said it best. You know, we, we heard from some fans, you know, one of our, our sort of super fans on the show, Steve, you know, kind of with the the Gilmer-Freddie Mitchell comparison a little bit. You know, he, that, you know, that twitch, that explosiveness, yeah. um, you can see it. And then, of Thanks. course, yeah. TNA and Pagan uh, rounding it out. I, I worry a little bit, frankly, about Pagan and TNA yeah. just because yeah. it's going to be hard to crack that top three, yeah. top four with just yeah. that top ten talent. And, and you wonder a little bit. With TMA kind of last year of eligibility, you wonder Pagan kind of wait, waiting for his breakthrough. I mean, are these potential candidates in that April 16th cancel portal window? You know, it, it sort of has to be said because there's just so much talent on the field. Yeah. You know, very I, I, excited to see it. And then I think to round it out, a lot of stability, I think, between Habermel and Matavel. You know, Habermel is, is the guy who, who's going to be your, your pass receiver. Matavel is your blocker. And so I think when you look at quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, so much continuity, so much explosiveness. This is sort of the, the most explosive Swiss Army knife set of tools UCLA football has had in a while. So excited uh, in terms of that side of the ball. The one question, the one linchpin moving forward that's going to decide the outcome of this season is the offensive line. And yeah. I thought, Wayne, you know, there's a long way to go with this group. Uh, Correct. To be honest, I think this group has regressed pretty significantly from last year, just these first two days. And I think part of the challenge 
of the the lack of fluidity on offense today in practice. Obviously, running a new system, understanding Kate is getting comfortable. But that defensive line, Wayne, was living in the backfield. I mean, I, I don't know if there was – and, you know, we were kind of more of a sideline angle, so we kind of saw the matchup more kind of head-to-head. I mean, it was hard to find moments – where the quarterbacks had sort of any amount of time whatsoever. And I don't know if there was more than one or two runs that went for positive yardage if you actually played tackle football today. So I think there's a long way to go with this offensive line. And I think the transfer portal opening on April 16th, that to me seems to be the priority because they have all the weapons in the world. The question is, is Garber's going to have enough time to be able to get the ball to these weapons in the right situation. And that is going to sort of make it or break it offensively moving forward. This team will go as far as this offensive line takes them. I mean, I think best case scenario, if they evolve the way they did in 2022 on that journey that they took with the skill position players that they have, I mean, you're talking about a 10 win team potentially, no question about it. If they kind of stay where they were last year, it's probably a seven, eight win team. But if they regress and, and you know, the, we lost a lot. And I don't know if we sort of reinforced what we've lost. You're talking about six wins or fewer. I mean, it's that significant a pendulum swinging here with the offensive line. But I think that has to be now focus plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D in terms of moving forward. So hey, go ahead. You, can, you can go well. Oh, and what I was just going to say is, yes, the offensive line is not perfect right now. But, Wayne, I don't know if you've been able to speak with Juan Castillo. I've seen him coaching up the O-line group. He looks fantastic out there, very intense guy. I mean, ask Jason Peters about, you know, Juan Castillo. Ask Jason Kelsey about, you know, this guy. Um, I I like the coaching there as well. Wayne, I'm going to give you the floor for the offensive line and what you think we potentially have. Well, I, I do. I want to respond to some of this stuff J- just because it's – it's first of all, I, the only coach I didn't talk to today, the new one that I wanted to, is Juan Castillo. Um, I watched him from afar. Um, I, I do have a different take on when I watch what offensive linemen are doing because, like, spring practice when you're putting in new stuff, um, just like with the quarterbacks, it's, it's – even back when I played with the great – guys that I played with on the offensive line, one of the greatest offensive lines probably ever in UCLA history. Um, sometimes we struggled and and pass under pressure, like obvious passing downs. The defense knows what you're doing. They're bringing it. They're blitzing. They're they're And even when you try to run in those situations, there's everybody's coming. It's like, it's, it's, it's complicated. And I don't think they're quite where they need to be with the play calling at this point, because they're only running so many things. So when when I watch some of the the pass plays where it's not a blitz, which is what I was more referring to, I I saw a couple of hot reads where I thought, you know, Garbers had thrown a couple of really nice slants where there was a blitz and it was like an old school side adjust, which is like from my day, that's what we did. You know, you replace, you know, he comes from here, you run a slant into that area. And so I enjoyed seeing that. But you could tell it was rusty. So when I was watching, there was some clean pass plays where there wasn't an extra person coming. Um, I agree. The running's hard to watch in practice when they don't go to the ground because you don't really see what the play really would have been. And and sometimes we forget that a three- and four-yard run is a successful play. Um, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I'm just saying that, like, I I just want – when you have very few plays, you're just learning – and you're you're trying to do all this stuff. Like I think sometimes I just look for different stuff when I'm watching what those guys are doing. As far as I'm going to go back to the beginning of what Jamal said, and I think that this is a really important point that people need to understand. The one thing that I've been blown away and impressed with with coaching um, is is Deshaun Foster is very confident in his own skin. And when you and I'm I'm blown away by this because he shouldn't he shouldn't seem so comfortable, right? This is a brand new moment. It's it's a big moment, and and he seems comfortable. And he's comfortable enough to let Eric Bieniemy, who again I've watched coach before, that is his personality. <laughs> Even when he was a running back coach, if he thought the offensive line coach was going wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing to help his running backs out, he would let him know. 
And he doesn't do it in a dick way, right? He does it in a way like, listen, I want to win. I am a coach. We're all in this together. And nobody takes it that way either. I thought that moment was, was I, I kind of smirked a little bit when he looked at the sidelines. Just like, listen, make sure your guys know the down and distance. Get their butts off the field. Like, like it's it's little stupid things that people don't realize. It's like It's like trying to explain to a middle school kid that every freaking time you run and you don't touch the line, you're the same jerk that's going to jump offside in the fourth quarter when we need you to make a play. And they look at you like, what are you talking about? The line has been there for a million years. It doesn't freaking move. And yet idiot players always creep up, games or otherwise. And as a quarterback, I used to go nuts. I used to look at my own teammates and go, get off the field. We're going to get a penalty. I mean, look at you like, what? Huh? Like, I'm like, you've played this sport your whole life. You don't need a coach to tell you to back up. How many times have you watched quarterback drills where the quarterback almost kills himself because all the people standing behind him are in the way? Every camp I've ever worked, get out of the way. And they look at you like they're idiots. Like, so you have to, you have to practice it. You have to remind coaches. And to have a coach that calls people out, I don't care if you're a player or a coach. Not in a, a bad way, but in a in a way that like, hey guys, we need to tighten it up. I've got some Super Bowl rings right here, right? We need to tighten it up. Like this is how a good practice looks. And so I love that. So I don't. I think it's Deshaun Foster's team, and I think he's allowing his coaches to coach. Ikaka Malloy, uh, he looked. He I didn't yeah. spend as much time looking at the defense, but I love his energy out there today. I thought the defense won today. Like, right, the defense was better today. Um, I had a great conversation with Medrano and, and Oladejo and, and, and some of the guys on defense, and they seem excited with what they're not changing as much. I'm sure they're changing some, but they're not changing as much. So, um, and yeah, there's holes to fill, and we all know that. And I agree with you that there's a, there's a moment coming up here that's going to be really important. And I promise you the coaches know that too. Right, the, the, this this window is going to be because there's some some holes getting another. Like seriously, center scares me right now because you know I don't know how good Ewan can be, and I hope he can be great. Um, I, I I think he works his butt off. I think he's a good kid. I just haven't seen him enough to know. Um, and then and putting Magna, and I've always loved it with defensive linemen. Like we we you know I don't know if he's going to end up being you know uh, mothy, but but those guys have good feet. And so to bring him over to center, um, and he's going to have to go up against a pretty good couple of defensive tackles a lot in practice. So if he can snap and move those feet and block, and he's intriguing to watch. But do you want a project coming? I mean, you see what I'm getting at? Like, so we had Duke Clements, who you can kind of count on, right? Like, he'd been there forever. So it'll be interesting. And then depth, right? Where does the depth come from? And and so to, to go back to what Jamal was saying about the O line, like it it was the best we've had in a long time two years ago, right? Last year it yeah. took it, it it dropped off, but it still was serviceable, but but needed to be better. Um, two years ago, I thought it was really really good, one of the better O lines we'd had in a long time. Um, and then and then this year we, we've got to find a way to be better again because some of those deeper routes down the field that we we're throwing today. I mean, I don't know how many times you guys said it, but I was like, even in seven on seven, sometimes I'm like, oh, that's sick. That's sick. That's sick. Like you can't wait that long. Right. So, so that's the kind of stuff they got to work on. So yes, I, I agree with that on, on depth, looking for guys there. I wouldn't even be surprised you guys, if there's a running back that pops up on the market, because remember Keegan's a different type of back. Totally. I mean, you can play him in so many different places and locations, but like maybe, you know, if someone pops up and then the, the, the edge rushers. Yeah. You know, we, we, I, we don't know. We, I know we picked up some guys, but but I, I just don't know. We lost so much talent, right? We lost so much talent there. So, by the way, whoever, and I talked to Matt Stevens on my way home today, and he goes, Wayne, he goes, just remember, they're going to be double team in Tony all year. So those guys are going to have it easy out there. I said, that's a good point. Because yeah. I think Jay, I think Jay's going to be a beast this year. I got him maybe sniffing all Big Ten this year. Yeah. I think he's going to be a future pro, but – you know, I feel great about the interior, and I think this is a great time to switch over to the defense. Mm -hmm. So, got to start with the defensive line. Keanu Williams is a former four-star guy, transferred down mm -hmm. from Oregon. He showed a lot of flashes last year that gets you excited. And then Toya, I mean, come on. This guy, 
I had him as the breakout player last year. Is very solid. I think he's going to go from solid to star this year. Mm-hmm. I think that's a real transition Jay Toye is going to make. And then the guy waiting in the wings, he was not on the field. Collins of Champ Young is waiting in the wings, yeah. the Miami transfer. And Wayne, I don't know if you can see this guy in the field. Six foot seven, 260 pounds. I mean, talk about being built out of this world. So you got that going for you. Yeah. He referenced, I, I think the secondary is maybe, and I, 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 I'm guilty of this every single year. Madman kills me for this. This looks like a very solid yeah. secondary. I, I feel great about it. Davies, Kirkwood, Kayvon Wallace looks like he's fitting in very naturally. But the linebacking room, man, Oladeja for his size. Mm -hmm. And Wayne, you missed this on the first practice. He went stride for stride, guarding the tight ends downfield at six foot three, 252 pounds, Wayne. That is the new era of linebackers. There's just some things that physics shouldn't allow people to do at that Mm -hmm. size. And Olafemi Oladeja just checks all the boxes on that. I actually feel very confident about the defense. We saw Jacob Busich, you know, the edge rusher coming from Navy out yeah. there. Uh, Al Pugh, I think his name yeah. is on the right side, Al Pugh. If they can add maybe another guy in the portal to kind of just throw another edge guy out there, uh, I feel actually pretty confident with the defense. Uh, Grant, it's not going to be the defensive line we had last year, but yeah. a lot of players. Talk to me quickly about the defense. Before I toss it back so, to our guy, so so we, we gotta go we gotta go backwards a little bit because I, I think you guys both make a good point. When you watch practice, and I bet you money that if we went to every school in the in the Big Ten, and and even a lot of schools that are that were left behind and are not, and you know, in Mountain West schools, you can go to any of them. You're gonna go out to practice and you're gonna walk away going, dang, they got some athletes. They, everybody has them. There's receivers everywhere. There's a lot of there's DBs that can run like the wind in a lot of places. I mean, I watch TV a lot. I, I've gone down to Palomar College down down south of me and watched their practices and gone, dang, dude, why aren't those why aren't those guys playing division one? Like there's a lot of guys like that. There's not a lot of great D linemen. There's not a lot of great O linemen. Those guys are harder to find. They're harder to develop. They're harder to so so really we all know this. Like the, the better, like the two years ago team that was a couple of plays away from a, a pretty magical year um, with when Dorian was a senior, that that team had a, a, a nasty O-line that kicked the living crap out of Utah and Washington back to back. So, so that's, 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 those, those are where you win games. So that's, that's your, you, I, lo- I love that you guys went there. Um, I love our skill. I'll, I'll say, because I, I, I mean, I'm not being mean to him, but, but J Mike, if you want to be a star, be a star. Right, we talked about you a lot. Now go out and put the numbers up because that's kind of what you have to do. And if not, someone else is going to do it. Right? We talked about how deep that room is. I, I don't really want a guy to keep playing based on name. I want guys to play because they've earned it, which is why we need more old linemen because you shouldn't play just because you're the best of what we've got left. You 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 want to play because you've beaten everybody else, and the guy behind you is actually good. You're just better than he is. That's what you want. So I talked to uh, Ikaka Mavoy uh, at the banquet, and I walked up to him, and I, 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 this was you know right after we found out that he was you know de coordinator, and I was like, God, I go, man, how how good was was Vita and 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 Gaines when you were in Washington? Because uh, I started thinking about the guys that he's coached, and I'm like, I don't remember two defensive studs like that like very much in this conference. I mean, those guys were like SEC guys. Those guys were like, are like, yeah, 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 yeah. oh yeah. my God. I'm yeah. like, they, they were just, they were amazing. And he, he looked at me and he goes, man, he goes, we're going to be good on the inside next year. And in referring oh, to yeah. Toyo, he goes, we're going to be really good on the inside. But love it. Right? Love but, it. But, but, but we have to, yeah. but we have to, and, and, and really, you guys, if people can't run up the middle on you, it changes what they do. It, and it also changes what you can do. If you can have guys that clog up the middle and, and cause chaos in the middle, it affects the whole game. When we had Kenny Clark back in the day, Kenny Clark, Clark was a game changer. Oh yeah, he was a game changer, and it was like you, you got you have to tell me you need to watch this guy. I know you don't watch interior D lineman very much, but you need to watch this guy. He's that good, and look at what he's done in the NFL. Right, he's just had an amazing career. So, so like so that, and then you throw in Oladejo who. <laughs> who you guys he talked to me about like like he asked me about like what do I do for a living and where are you from and oh you're a middle school teacher I remember and this and then he ran ran and ran a play and came back out and 
he's like the nicest guy in the world and he looks like he could like they could flick me and i would go flying somewhere he's just a huge human being with a huge like he's like the nicest guy in the world and with right. him and, and kane who's who still looks like he's a receiver sometimes is i keep going can you gonna put on 10 pounds or not but he's but he runs like the wind and he's such a good athlete so like I love those guys coming back. I know you guys have seen you saw Ali Kahu out there. We still have no idea what he can be. I know I don't think he had his pads on. I think, but I think he's running around out there. Like I saw him and I saw his jersey. So who knows what's gonna happen? John John's playing baseball. So like linebacker, I I, I agree with you guys. I think we're solid. Okay, what are we gonna have coming off the edge? You know, yeah. that's that's tricky. And I'm with you guys. Secondary again in practice. It's always a little different in games. It, it really is like it's if you're when you're an athlete, they're relaxed. You know, they they, they kind of and, and if, a, if something big happens, they can come back on the next play and make an interception. But in a game, those those messed up plays matter a ton, and we we'd love to blame our DBs. So it, it's hard, but I I do like the way they look today. I thought the coverage was really good. Cody Whitfield is a coach that we don't give enough credit to. Totally. He's he's done a very 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 good job and he's got such a great demeanor out there he's got so positive but he's again you can be on players in a different way not everybody can be eric bien that's his own unique personality right other coaches do it in a different way but man it's 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 i love watching him coach he's fantastic madman yeah piggyback off that for the defense man what were your thoughts for the first two practices yeah, well, I, and and Wayne, I you know not not too much more to add. I I completely agree. I think you know starting with the secondary, obviously you've got you know the Kirkwoods and the Davies yeah. and Willis. I think is a gamer. I love the fact that he mm-hmm. played against such elite competition at Georgia Tech. Yeah. I mean, he played Clemson, he played Ole Miss, he played Bama, mm-hmm. he played Georgia. You name it. He's he's been in some of the biggest games and in some of the biggest venues. And he kind of looks the part out there. And, and there's a swagger to him and a willingness to sort of mix it up that I hope will permeate across that secondary. I agree with you, Wayne. It's sort of hard to tell sometimes in these yes. situations where yeah. you are with the secondary. But I think personnel-wise, they're just as good as last year, if not better. So there's mm-hmm. no reason to believe that's going to be a dip in any way, shape, or form. I think it's really interesting with the front seven. I think you guys sort mm-hmm. of nailed it. Toya and Keanu, I think, are going to be those anchors in the interior. Uh, but I think the question is going to be who is going to complement them on the outside. You know, the other guy, Ali Kehau and Achiempong, were both there, but no pads. I think we're all waiting, Wayne, for Achiempong because I think he's yeah. he could be the single greatest difference maker of this entire team this year uh, in terms of kind of credibility and explosiveness on the edge. And I think that's not to sort of double down and pile on but that's why there was such a deep concern for me with the offensive line today because mm-hmm. you don't have lot to you don't have the murphy twins you don't have carl right. jones you don't have etchie Pong, and yet the edge was sort of still living in the backfield you know mm-hmm. that that was sort of a concern uh moving forward and i think it relates to other things on the field as well you mentioned sturdivan you know sturdivan is his game is built on such explosive plays and deeper routes and if you don't pass block, you just don't get the right. you don't get the utilization rate. You know, he was open so much last year. We just didn't have time to get him the ball. And so that's that's kind of the concern there. And then I think at the linebacker, I mean, we got the dynamic duo with Oladeja and Medrano. I think they're they're the anchors, but who's gonna be that third linebacker? I think there's a hole there. John John would be, I think, the perfect kind of complement in this sort of hybrid safety linebacker type of role the way the chargers used to use derwin james i think there's a world there where john john becomes that guy the question though wayne is he's crushing it on the baseball diamond yeah. right now. Yeah. does he go pro baseball and I, I mean do we have we seen the last of john john bonds on the gridiron and if that is the case i think there's a hole there but i think the two areas where i think we're still waiting to sort of see emerge over the course of spring is who's going to be captaining the front seven and who's going to be captaining that second year? Yeah. Yeah. Moantel was the captain of that front seven in terms mm-hmm. of making sure everybody was in the right spot, seeing the whole field, calling audibles, and just sort of having a command of that unit. Is yeah. that good for Ladijo? Is, is he that leader or is he pure athlete? Is that going to be Madrano or does yeah. Madrano just want to play a role? Is that going to be someone new that's going to need to step in and fill that leadership void? 
That's what I'm sort of looking for um, yeah. in that short seven. And then in the secondary, you know, two years ago, that captain of the secondary was Blaylock. Uh, you know, we talked about it a ton, Wayne. And even Mark Jarman talked about it, of, of Blaylock calling out the plays. Remember that Utah game, Wayne, two mm-hmm. years ago, Blaylock got knocked out. Uh, he, he got ejected like the second play of the game. Yeah. And everybody was so worried because it's like, well, who's going to captain the secondary now? You know, and we, we pulled that game out. I think the thought was this year – that heir apparent was Kamari Ramsey. I think Ramsey now has moved since moved on. So who's going to be that captain? Is it going to be Wallace? Yeah. Is Kirkwood going to step up and do a leadership role? So I think I'm I'm excited, cautiously optimistic about the defense. I think we need a edge depth. I think we need to figure out who that third linebacker is going to be, and then who's going to be captaining that front seven, and who's going to be captaining that secondary. That's I think what I'm looking for the next couple of weeks. So, so th- this is this is great, you guys, because I, I I love everything we're saying. There's a couple of names I want to throw out at you guys. One is uh, <clears throat> Jalen Woods, who, yeah. who his athleticism just jumps off the page to me. Like I, whenever I watch him play, I'm like this guy can run. He looks very athletic. He's not the biggest guy in the world, um, but remember how good Carl was, right? Remember what all the things that Carl could do. And then I, I don't know exactly what he is. Funny because remember um, Donovan Pellet. Or Pellot, I'm not exactly. Hello. He's a really intriguing athlete as well. He's almost a guy that looks like he could be a strong safety, uh, a, a, a kind of hybrid linebacker. Like kind of build he, like bonds, you know what I mean? Yes. And so we have some of those. And, and you know, and hopefully, John, John, you know, don't don't scare me with with because that could happen. You're right. But but we, we want that that depth. And John John by the end of the year last year was playing a lot better. Like he, he was playing pretty good. So, but but I think Jalen Woods is a player to watch. I think. Uh, but you say it's you pronounce it Polo. 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 Okay. Uh, so so but I but I like those guys quite a bit. Um, as far as the leadership goes, I don't think we're going to be worried about Madrano or Oladejo. I think they're both going to take the reins. I, th- I think I, I mean those guys were pretty vocal from where I was today. And, and you can tell they're older guys that, you know, Madrano's been there forever. So, like, he's, he's not shy. So, I think we'll be fine there. And that doesn't mean we won't miss Moose. I'm Moose had a great year last year. We're going to miss all these guys, but that's college football. The great thing about college football is when you have a good program, you've got a guy when Sean LaChapelle goes on to the NFL, named J.J. Stokes, it's like, hey, wait a second, you guys, I'm, I'm going to be really good. We're fine. Right. When you think you don't have a great receiver, you get a Freddie Mitchell, you get a you get a, a, a Danny Farmer, you get a like they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I know I play volleyball, but I can catch touchdowns from K2. So like there, there's got there's there's players at all positions that are like just wait. You know, you mentioned up you or and again, I, I apologize to the players. I'm not saying their name, their name right. When you play more, I research you more. So and he looks the part. He's looked the part since he came over from Notre Dame. But he's got to put it on the field now. He's got to show that he can live up to the the body type and the size that he has. Um, is I don't know if he's on. Did we did we lose uh, Che? Is is Che Brian Strother still around or is you he? You were looking for him at practice. I haven't yeah. seen him through two practices. I actually yeah. had a, a fan come I up. Have the, I have the list, but I'm like okay. either way. I don't want to say anything. But he's another guy that looks great in the uniform. It's got you know like. So I, I, there's, you know, but, but, but I agree with everything you said. There's questions in those areas because you have to replace not just talent, but you have to replace personalities. Sometimes people forget that, like, as, as nutty as, <laughs> as the Murphys were, man, I'm telling you, man, their motors were off oh, the man. charts. Oh, and they were, and you knew they were out there. Yes, they drove you crazy with being offsides and, and all the, the, the silly penalties that we got, which were, were costly at times, which has already been addressed. Coach Foster does not want that to happen. We, we need to, because because if you really think about the Chip Kelly era, one of the things that we can improve from that era is penalties. I, I thought we had timely, like it seemed, didn't it seem like every time we had a bad penalty on offense early in a drive, like it was over, we were going to punt. The only year we didn't do that was the DTR senior year. We kind of overcame that a lot. but but like. We, we just would do something dumb on defense or offense in a lot of games. And it was like, oh, my gosh, how do we do that? We, did, we were about to get the ball back. So so hopefully we clean that up. But I, I'm, I'm with you guys. I, I agree on, on we, need to, we need to find answers, which is why spring is awesome and which is why, let's I mean, the modern world, the transfer portal is coming. 
So who knows what's going to happen? 11 days to the transfer portal. We're already in <laughs> spring football. I mean, to quote the great Jim Harbaugh, who's got it better than us, guys? Nobody. We got this going on, man. Spring football for UCLA. It is an exciting time. Big thank you to the man, Wayne Cook, for coming on as always. We love you, buddy. Thanks for coming on sharing the insights, my guy. I'm back on Saturday. There's going to be a bunch of alumni out of practice. So if you're a if you're a fan and you want to come up there and sit up in Lot H and watch, you'll probably see a ton of former players floating around practice. So it'll be it should be a really, really fun day. And the center is going to be a silver fox around those four oh. players. <laughs> Stop it. I don't know what's happened to me, but it used to, it, used to, it wasn't always this color. It's looking good, man. It's looking Absolutely. good. Well, guys, subscribe to the podcast. Make sure to check it out. We'll be back uh, as soon as we can for radio on ESPN. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bruin Bible, we are officially out. Have a good one, guys, and come out to practice on Saturday.